delicious. But you know if I'm drinking out of a bottle that it's time to brew a beer. Today I'm having the Millstream Chocolat Bock. So good. Chocolate Bock. Mm. Millstream, they know what they're doing. So I've already got a uh, batch of water here warming up. Today we're doing a recipe I just made up. It's called Joe's Ordinarily Bitter. <laughs> you get it? Anyway, um, and we're going to do it as a standardization. So I've already got my grains milled, already got them in the pot here. Oh, mash tun, you can see. Here we go. Um, false bottom, of course, everything's installed there. Valves are all closed. We've got our water heating up. We're going to be mashing this about 150, 151. So it's just going to be an ordinary bitter. Uh, I, for a five gallon batch, seven pounds of Maris Otter, eight ounces of Gold Swan Brown Supreme Malt, an ounce of Challenger for 60, half an ounce of Target in the last 10, and a pack of uh, British Ale 2. Uh, because I'm standardizing it, I'm double that, and we're going to essentially brew that high gravity beer and thin it down in the fermenter. So everything's lined up, everything's powered up. I gotta do my smack packs, my rice here. So get this going, and uh, yeah, once that water gets up to temp, I hear it. One down. Um, yeah, once that. Uh, Water temperature gets up, we'll get the mash going. Recirculate, uh, only going to be an hour long mash on that, nothing too crazy. Maris converts really well and really fast. Um, I did dial down this recipe just a little bit. I was thinking doing a bitter because the last time you saw we had all that foaming and the mash tun was super full. This one here is so now it's a total of 14, 15 pounds of grain, which is nothing. Um, the last standardization we did, I think it was pushing like 23, 24 pounds, and that was about the capacity. So this one should be easy breezy cover girl. Um, I am going to try something new this time though. Defoamer 105. I'm not sure if you've ever used this stuff before, or if anyone has before, but essentially it's five stars uh, silicone defoamer. Um, one drop in the batch should make it uh, not foam over, essentially, because we were kind of fighting it that last time. So I figured let's give it a try. Uh, this is five stars version of if you've ever heard of, uh, what is it, Firm Cap S? Uh, same, same shit, different manufacturer. So this is what we carry at the store, so this is what I got. So yeah, there we go. Joe's Ordinarily Bitter. We'll see you once we start recircling. Alrighty, it's that time. We're at 151 over here, which is obviously not the best strike temperature. Most of the time you find it higher, you know, 168-ish. But my grain is sitting at 82 degrees, because it was hot as hell on the drive home. So uh, I'm just going to roll with that. And then because it's a recirculating system, it very quickly adjusts its temperature. So that being said, um, let's see. I forgot my 5.2 again. I'll be back. I do not know how, but I always forget this stuff. <laughs> Alrighty, so... Yummy. Whoop. Beautiful. See how it changes? Not crazy. Okay. So, that being said, so let's see, we've got the valve here, we've got this valve, open. we're going to open this one here so it can receive the water. I'm going to throttle this guy down a little bit and we're going to open up this valve here and then uh, pump's plugged in so we should be ready to roll. See, I'm not faking out. The water level is lowering, so... <laughs> I just love that. Do you film your videos in real time? Why, yes, I do. 
just gotta keep it real. Alright, it's starting to come up here. I'll keep going for just a few. So I think that's gonna be pretty good to uh, to begin our dough in, I believe. But yeah, great. So, killed the pump, shut this off so that way there's no back, um, back flow, you know? Because we're trying to uh, obviously keep the grains from the uh, pump and from the uh, main kettle here as much as possible. So, here's Joe's eye view. You can see. Just gotta mix this all in. Make sure everything's good. Oh, yeah. been a while since I brewed. I was telling folks at the shop that uh, I'm starting to feel like a con artist because I'm selling homebrew stuff and I haven't done it so long myself. I'm like, do I even remember how to do this? <laughs> so, yeah. Beautiful. So here we are. All right. Pumps off. Everything's doed in. I've checked and uh, it's looking pretty good. I added a little bit more uh, a little bit more of the uh, strike water there. So now thinned it down, it's looking good. Let it set for a few minutes there and uh, just kind of let everything absorb, you know? And so now we have to carefully, I shut this ball valve off down here, I pop this off and it's gonna kind of blow a little bit. See, I'll take that, pop it up here. And now what we're going to do is that little Vorloff thing I do, and that's just to clear the uh, bottom of the, uh, the false bottom there, just so that way I minimize all this grain getting in there, because why, why not, you know? Cleaner mash, you know? Less stuff I have to hope gets sucked up during the recirculation, and this takes no time at all. You can see how, uh, that color, how opaque it is. starchy. That's one thing I love about this is being able to actually see the the, uh, the work change color going from the starchy to the uh, sugar. Um, it's cool. So yeah, I just do this a couple times to clear that false bottom of any bits and then we begin the recirculation. Um, I'll move the temperature probe, of course, we got to do that. But yeah, nice and easy. So if I were doing this on uh, in my mash ton, I would have already had it the strike temperature correct. I wouldn't have uh, just fudged that 151 or whatever. I would have done my calculations. Um, but with this setup, I don't need to do that. Uh, and then just dough it in and seal it up, come back in an hour. Uh, this is an extra step kind of needed for the two vessel rims kind of thing I've got going on. But essentially we're just prepping the bottom of that uh, false bottom for success. Prepping it for success. It's gotta be great. It's gonna be delicious. I'm doing, this is overkill. Now. It doesn't kind of look like a latte or something. Look at that color. <laughs> Craving a frappuccino now, man. I think that's good. All right. So we got that. Now I'm going to take my smaller hose, connect it to here, into the return of the hot liquor tank slash boil kettle and that's that so now I'm gonna begin the recirculation I'm gonna move you though over here so you can see the color change because I think this is cool
out of there. Okay, so you can see we've got beautiful dark wort. I went ahead and did an iodine test, so I just took my handy dandy container, put a couple spoonfuls uh, of wort in, dropped a couple drops of iodine sanitizer on there, and lo and behold, we had conversion, no dark spots. Um, one thing, I did actually have a bit of a stuck mash with this one. It's first time ever, so I'm gonna have to look and see what I did differently. Um, but, I had a boatload of grain particles in here. I, I've actually just been working on that. So, what I did is I took my handy dandy double mesh strainer here and basically just kept agitating it because I've got I've got that big electrical um, uh, water heater element in there so I can't scoop down to the bottom I can't actually get the stuff up from essentially as it's been rotating there would have been a cone develop in the center so I just agitated it and I kept doing this trying not to splash it around but enough to get the work moving really really rapidly and every time I pull up here, uh, grain particles were getting caught. So I did that for probably about five minutes trying to get as much of it out of there as I can. So uh, just word to the wise, if you uh, have that problem and uh, you don't know quite what to do, grab your good old stainless uh, strainer and just kind of work it until it's looking pretty good. There's still some in there, you know, I mean, I can see them right now, but it's, it's good enough. It, it's it'll work. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, shut the pump off. We're going to let the mash tun slowly drain into here and then we will begin our boil. So we will see you as we get closer to the boil because I need to figure out uh, when to put in that uh, the, the foam inhibitor. So yeah, we'll see you in a bit. Okay so it's still draining in there and you can see we're starting to develop some foam and um, I've got it set at 180 degrees so that's where it's currently uh, temperature wise. And so I'm going to dial it up just a little bit here, um, maybe to 190, you know, get some movement going. But we've got to add in our defoamer. And it says for one five gallon batch to start with one drop because 10% food grade silicone anti foam. And uh, do not exceed the 200 parts per million. So I say, shall we just go one drop? Do I stir this in? I don't know. That was literally one drop. That's weird. If that's all it takes, I'm gonna take, there's a little bit left on there, I'm just gonna take that. So we'll mix that in, yeah, I'm guessing. Um, we'll know here in a few, right? I wanted to use the antifoam this time because knowing I was gonna do the standardization batch, it was gonna be a real full boil, and I'm already nervous because the mash is still draining. Um, so I'm gonna have to keep my eye on it. Never to fear though, Waddle Bottle. Waddle Bottle? <laughs> Water Bottle is here. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So while it's heating up, I'm just skimming off some of this foam here. It's not needed, you know? I found that helps with, you know, helping prevent boilovers. And you can see we are really full. Uh, push this one a little bit. But I guess that's what you get when you don't brew every weekend, right? I'm rusty. But anyway, a lot of foam. That's how much I've pulled out so far. You can see a little bit of beer under there, but not a whole lot. It's mostly it's foam. So yeah, we'll keep doing this. Should be up to temp soon. I've got it set to stop at 205, just so that way I don't have like an eruption. But um, yeah, we're at 196, so almost there. You can see it's starting to, to move in there. Okay, we have made it past the hot break. I added one more drop of the depot. 
foamer, and I went ahead and put in the hop filter here. Uh, big stainless steel mesh kind of cone shaped thing that goes down the bottom. Now we're going to add our two ounces of Challenger. We got this at the ready because you know how this goes. until we need to add the next hop addition in the world flock and get everything more circulating. And I've been asked a couple times how I go about changing the, the tube. Um, obviously, things are pretty, pretty toasty to the touch. Um, I have a glove. <laughs> but because there's uh, you know, liquid still in the line, you can kind of see that there a little bit. See how it's like darker here and it's lighter? That's the liquid level in the, uh, in the boil kettle there. So, this is my fancy metal. This one here. You can see the liquid there. I need to get it down below the pump, basically, so I can shut the pump valve and I can remove this hose. Here we go. That's it. That's <laughs> not ridiculous. But it works. Now, because I'm going to be pumping it into a fermenter over there, I'm going to put the long one on here. So that's ready to go. Now, this one's a little trickier, but it's the same concept because uh, I only have that much to work with, so I have to be very careful to not drop it too low and get that valve closed. So, we'll shut this one off. just in case, but if I need to do this one for some reason, this sucker's boiling time, you know, it's, it's really, really damn hot. Um, and so yeah, so now what we're going to do is get our sprayer head piece attached to the out, like so. And then what I do is I actually put this in here. on the pump and I get it recirculating through the chiller. Now I do typically take those first runs and dump them. I, it's a practice I've started doing and I kind of like it because just in case there's anything funky in the chiller, it's going to be blown out first. So I guess I didn't need to put that in quite yet. So, close. The valve down here is closed, you can see. So we basically open that one back up. Alright. Okay. And the patch. 
how much I pull out. It's not a whole, whole lot. Just enough in case there's anything in there, I get it out. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, now what do we do? <laughs> I think it's hot time. Take my wolf walk tablet. going to uh, overflow. I've had that happen before. Alrighty, so now we're going to set it for 10 minutes and uh, get the fermenter clean and sanitized. And we're ready to chill. to 10. Uh, I need about another gallon, huh? That's pretty darn close. sanitized paddle. Give it a mix here. Make sure everything is homogenized. to sanitize my, uh, my dropper to take the refractometer reading. No, I don't. I'll just leave it just like that. Gravy. Refractometer at the ready. Try to get less foam on there. Whoop, there we go. Alright, so let's see what we got. Hey, cool, 1035, 36, 1.037, and the target for this one, according to my spec sheet, 
Um, 10.35. So we're actually above. That's cool. I'll take it. Alright, we'll get this out of here. I gotta do an obligatory taste test, right? Mmm! Yeast pack one. Go to work, my pretties. Enjoy the buffet I've created. <laughs> And yeast pack too. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this sealed up here, and uh, then I will be back and we'll, we'll chat. So yeah, before I start cleaning up, so be back in a second. So there we go, YouTube. Another batch done. Another standardized batch done. So 10 gallons of essentially a, a standard bitter, an English bitter. 1037 gravity. The IBUs were like 22 or 23, so it's going to be really mellow. Um, smelled great. The work tasted delicious. The color looked just right. So I'm excited to see how this one goes, you know, see how it ferments out. And, uh, you know, with the 1335, um, I think I've used 1335 one other time. I think. I don't even remember. So uh, it, it said that it would attenuate well. It was uh, appropriate for a standard bitter or even an ESB. Um, so I think it should work out great. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on the temperature, of course. We chilled it down in the plate chiller. It was it pretty much throttled itself right at 68 degrees, which was great. And I had the water running pretty hard. So now that it's warmer out and, you know, our water tower is in the sun, you know, it's getting, it's getting warmer. Um, so we'll have that, that kind of delta when it comes to the, uh, the actual cooling of the wort with the plate chiller. So, but yeah, so far so good. Knock on wood. Everything went great. Now I clean. <laughs> it's always the worst part, right? The cleaning. Um, but yes, uh, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I did a deep clean on everything last time, so this one's just going to be one of my quicker ones. I'm going to just wipe everything down, blast the plate chiller here out, and uh, dump the grains in the compost. So yeah. Thank you as always for watching. If you've got any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. If you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. And if you haven't seen, consider uh, supporting me on Patreon. You can make a very small donation for each video uh, that I produce, you know, moving forward. Uh, and that would go a really, really long way to helping me keep making these videos. Uh, times are getting pretty tough at the store. Um, so if you can't shop at the homebrew shop, you know, BIY Homebrew Supply, my homebrew shop, um, please consider a Patreon donation. It'd be really really appreciated um, yeah more videos to come um, and yeah can't think of anything else except thanks for watching cheers and 17 <laughs> mm.